All right, thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Jeff, and thank you to the, uh, the organising committee for uh, Minds and Wines 2022 for having, having me along to, to, to talk. Um, and, and thank you, you Catherine, for, for that uh, introduction. There are a lot of similar themes between what you're talking about and, and what, uh, what we're doing. And, um, and probably that, that phrase you gave us at the end is, is what you're looking to do, is make it easier for people to, I think it was, find the data, load it and play with it. And, and that's exactly the sort of thing that, um, that we're hoping to do with our, our Mineral Deposit Atlas. Uh, so uh, before before I go on, um, I'm, I'm talking today. Uh, Rick Valenta was was slated to be on the uh, on the agenda today, but he couldn't make it. He'll be here tomorrow, I believe. So so I'll I'll, I'll talk to you about this uh, today. And uh, there's a bunch of people who've been working on this uh, on this mineral deposit atlas, uh, and you'll you'll see their names listed there. Um, what I should say is that, uh, and Jeff touched on this, is that the uh, Geological Survey of Queensland has has funded uh, a lot of this work, essentially with the objective of of making it known to people what type of deposits uh, exist and what they look like in North East Queensland. Uh, and the whole, whole objective is, is targeted towards explorers and we put these atlases together and they're a bit, a bit like a review paper but with a much stronger emphasis on what the, the deposit and its, its halos look like. Um, so, so that's that's essentially what it is. Um, so, so we've done these this deposit uh, atlas in northeast Queensland. Some of you who've been maybe working up in the Mount Isa province will have seen the the atlas we've done up there, where where we worked on on 22 different deposits, um, and and we've also done some work with the Northern Territory um, Survey. Oop. So, um, just just to sum up, the 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 mineral deposit atlas. The objective is is for it to be a, a reference documenting the deposit characteristics, but also the halo and the signature from an exploration perspective. And, and when I say exploration perspective, that, that is, is code for common exploration data sets. So, so we, we really have, have a look at those, um, those data sets, the, the, the regional geophysics and indeed the local geophysics, the, the, you know, the common stream sediment um, databases that, that are around, as well as particularly the, uh, the alteration mineralogy and zonation around, around the uh, deposits. So it's, that's a very, very strong focus. And, and it's, it's really the focus is explorers, if, if you're in the field and you're looking at outcrops or you're looking at core and, and you're seeing some sort of characteristics, whether that be in, in, in your geophysical data or, or in the alteration assemblage, for example, is that you can then go and say, well, in, in this case, I, I, I think it looks like, I think it looks like um, Wolfram Camp or, or is it more like Mount Carbon, Mount Carbon, another, another tungsten deposit. And, and the objective is that you can go to a, a single source of information and have a look and see what those deposits look like and perhaps have a look at your core or your data sets and say, well, well, I think it's more likely one rather than the other. Um, I guess the, the other thing I should, should emphasise is that this, this work was funded by the New Economy Minerals um, Initiative of the Geological Survey of Queensland. So the, um, the, the deposit focus is, is very heavily on those New Economy uh, minerals and, and metals, so, so tungsten, uh, and tin is the very heavy focus as well as there's a sort of a nickel cobalt um, scandium deposit that we've looked at as well. Um, so so what, what, do the, what do the atlases look like? Well, each chapter comprises two parts. Each chapter is, is one deposit or, or mineral field. Um, and that, that comprises your standard, I guess, descriptive PDF document, which is, is sort of an A3 atlas type um, of document. Um, a, a review, and then the, the, the second part is, is the 3D atlas, where we've drawn together as much data as we, as we can and put that into a 3D environment, so I'll talk about that in a bit. But it's, it's basically that, that 3D data, we put it together in a thing called Geoscience Analyst, which is a, is a, a freely available software platform um, built, built by a group called Myra Geoscience, who are involved with um, the GOCAD mining suite. Uh, but we're aware that uh, every, everybody has their own, own favourites when it comes to a 3D environment, so where possible we've put that raw data in as well so that people can bring it into their own, own environment to, to have a look at. Um, so the mineral deposits in the Atlas, we've looked at three, three tungsten deposits and uh, I'll touch on them, on them briefly. Uh, one nickel scandium deposit, that's, that's the Scony cluster of deposits you'll see down, down the, the south there. And, uh, and two base metals plus, uh, plus tin, tin, tin deposits. So that's uh, what the 11 uh, deposits comprise. Um, so just, just uh, ha having a look at those deposits, um, we, 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 over the last three years, I guess, had, had done the Northwest Queensland Mount Isa Province uh, Atlas, and there are, there are striking uh, differences. 
uh, between northeast Queensland and northwest Queensland, and and one of those is is when you look at the discovery history um, in in northeast Queensland, those those discoveries were made a, a lot lot earlier, and you'll see a lot of lot of numbers, dates of discovery starting with 18s there. So it's a very uh, historic field as as opposed to, for example, the Mount Isa province. As, as you would expect, the method of discovery for, for these deposits that we've included or, or districts that we've included are, are very heavily biased towards prospecting, which was what was happening at that, at that time in, in history. Uh, and then, then the last couple you'll see you get on, on to methods, um, you know, stream sediment sampling and rock chips, which involve more modern uh, analytical uh, techniques. Um, and, and interestingly, when you, when you look at the metal and, and mineral um, that are in those deposits, it was very early on dominated by tin and then, then through uh, into tungsten and then the, uh, the polymetallic deposits. And, um, and whilst most of, these, um, most of these deposits are related to the Kennedy uh, Igneous Association, and you'll see they, they have um, sort of broadly similar types. There's a lot of grises and stockworks, um, sheeted vein systems, etc. cetera, and, uh, and, and obviously the alluvial deposits that we've covered as well, the alluvial tin deposits. Uh, but then, and the only one, I guess, that's not related to the Kennedy Igneous Association Arguably, uh, is the is the uh, Scone um, deposit. That's the yeah, that's the uh, nickel cobalt scandium uh, laterite. So they're, they're the um, they're the deposits that we covered. Um, so so I guess the objective today is, is not so much to present new data or, or, or new concepts or, or or theories. It's more I guess probably three objectives: a to let you know that these um, deposit atlases exist. B, um, what's in them, and then C, where, where you can get them, which I'll get onto in a minute, which is essentially on, online, uh, downloadable. Um, so, so the data sources we, we've looked through, dug through, and, and you saw that list of, uh, of authors on the front slide, a lot of, lot, of, lot of people working on this, digging through the data to try and get what we could. As you would imagine, the Department of Resources, which is the, the Queensland Geological Survey, has provided a, a hell of a lot of data. Um, particularly from the abandoned sites, um, for example, Bel Belgammon. Um, some of these sites are now uh, uh, formally, officially abandoned mine sites and, and any data that was available has been handed over to the Department of Resources. Um, some of them, uh, for example, Mount Carbine is currently uh, uh, being run by uh, EQ Resources and, uh, and Cronymet and they, they've generously provided a, a lot, of, lot of data including their drill hole database and, and their geological model, uh, for example. Um, historic research um, theses. Um, I, I bumped into um, Jaime Pablete yesterday. He, he did a lot of work up at uh, Watershed, uh, so we've used his, his work quite uh, extensively on that tungsten deposit. Um, published papers. Um, a, lo a lot of these deposits, there, I guess they're, they're on the smaller end. They've been owned um, by juniors historically, and, and, and it, it, it seems to be a function of, of these types of deposits. And I, I don't know, I presume it's commodity, why it's the commodities is that um, the, the prices are so volatile that these deposits seem to go in and out of production and, uh, and change ownership quite regularly. So there's quite a lot of material, that, an amazing amount of material that you can dig up just through old stock exchange releases, etc. Um, and I guess finally the, uh, the government databases, so that, um, so that both Geological Survey and uh, Geoscience Australia have, have pretty significant databases. And um, in, in particular, the um, GSQ, I guess they launched their geoscience data portal probably about two years ago now, and it's, a, it's an absolute wealth of information. And, and if you, you think about working in Queensland, it's worth, worth having a good look at that. Um, so in, in terms of the, um, I guess we call it a hard copy, but it's, it's a PDF that, that we produce for each deposit, um, we, we've, I guess, tried to take that, um, that coffee table approach and make it more, uh, more diagrams and, uh, that, that are interesting to look at rather than text that, uh, that, um, that you have to wade through. And, um, and I guess that ties back. I love, I love the first slide that um, Catherine put up with that, um, with that table of, um, massive table of isotope data and, and, and she's exactly right. That's, that's why we have so many problems communicating science is, is because we, we put up tables and, and, and text and, and all those sorts of things. But what, what we've aimed to do is make it um, much, much more visual and spatial, and not, not only spatial in the 2D sense, like you see these collections of, of, of images, but uh, the, the 3D atlas as well is trying to put all that information into a 3D spatial context. 
Um, so, so we have, have all these regional data sets we've put together, all at the same scale, same area, uh, you know, the, the, the comprehensive stream sediment databases and the, the airborne geophysics, etc. Basically so that you, you can tie, tie those different data sets together in the same uh, spatial context. Um, I'm, I'm obviously not going to talk about all the deposits in, in the atlas, but I thought I would just introduce you to a few, uh, few deposits. So, so let's have a look at those three, three tungsten deposits because they're, um, they're quite, quite interesting. Um, um, water, water, watershed, Mount Carbine and, uh, and Wolfram Camp. So Mount, Mount Carbine is sort of actively being worked, mainly, mainly the waste and the tailings at the moment. And we have a, um, at the, the Sustainable Minerals Institute, we have an active project up there, which is essentially looking at how, how ore sorting can be used to, to A, go back through the waste, and, and B, also be incorporated in, into future mining. So I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but, but the interesting thing uh, we see here is that there, there are these three tungsten um, deposits up here. They're highlighted by those red stars. Um, so you have Wolfram Camp, which is the one to the south, and it's a little bit older. It's, it's about 307 million years is, is its um, date, uh, and associated with the Utan Super Suite, which is part of the Kennedy Igneous Association. And then Mount Carbine and Watershed, you'll see up to the north there, they're a little bit younger associated with the Waipala Super Suite. And um, I guess the, the big difference here, and I'll flip on to the next uh, slide actually, is, um, is, is where they're located in relation to the Kennedy Igneous Suite and particularly uh, level of emplacement and or erosion. So what you see here on the left is the residual gravity image. In the middle, the, the first vertical derivative of the aeromagnetic uh, data and the, the summary geology. And what you can see, I hope, anyway, these are fantastic data sets. They were collected by the um, GSQ as, as pre-competitive data sets. So if, if you look down, oh, sorry, wrong button. If you look down to the south, uh, south west down here, you'll see that, that this, is, this is where we have a lot of outcrop of the Kennedy Igneous um, Association felsic, felsic rocks. And you, you can see that in the, in the magnetic data, there are these be beautiful uh, outlines of, of the different intrusive phases and their overprinting relationships, etc. Um, and, and so the Wolfram Camp deposit sort of sits, sits on, on the edge of that, um, that ex large exposure uh, area of, of um, felsic rocks. And then as you head out to the, out to the northeast from there, you start to get into the, uh, into the, um, into the um, Hodgkinson Formation rocks and you start to see just these, these blobs of, of um, Kennedy uh, igneous material, felsic material coming through the Hodgkinson Formation. And so, so it's a very, very different um, setting, um, erosional setting, I guess, in terms of down here, it's, it's eroded well down into the, into the granites, uh, but up to the north, uh, northeast, you're still with a lot of Hodgkinson formation and basically towards the top of, top of those, those granites. And you'll see that in the gravity image. So if, if, you, look, if you look through this area and you say, well, well where, where is the lowest gravity, which basically corresponds to the, the low density uh, granites, you'll see that it's, it's this area up to the north. So what, what that's telling you, that gravity data, is that these, these, these granites have a, a much larger depth extent and, and that's basically because you, you're still at the top of the systems here, whereas down to the south there, there's not so many really deep low gravity features be, because you've, you've taken a bit off the top of those, of those granites. Well that's my, my interpretation anyway. So, so it's an interesting area and these, these, um, and, and these, these Tungsten deposit types probably reflect those different uh, environments. So Wolfram Camp, it's 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 a it's an old um, old old deposit as we saw discovered in the 1880s. Um, it's it's um, a, a reasonable um, grade. I think it's about 0.224 there. Um, and what what we've done, th this is a screenshot up on the right here from from the geoscience analyst part of the of the atlas. Um, so, so we've sort of put in the old workings, some cross sections that we could get hold of and plans and, and in this case that isosurface in green there, it's, it's, a, it's a bit blobby but it was, was taken from some poorly constrained data but um, we've, we've taken the decision we'd rather put, put in blobby, blobby units that, that give you a general impression of the geometry of that mineralisation rather than, than sort of avoid it altogether. So, um, so that's, that's the Wolfram Camp deposit and then uh, what we've put in, in in the atlas, we've tried to put a, a plan and a typical section through a deposit. So for in this camp, um, it's, it's showing that Wolfram Camp is, is that typical Gryzen style of, of mineralisation, sitting on the contact there between the James Creek granite and the, and the Hodgkinson formation. 
Um, well, one, one other thing, we've, we've tried to include in the, in the mineral deposit atlases um, hand specimens, so, so it's as, as high a resolution as we could get, and you could imagine with all these old deposits that haven't been worked for a long while, that's sometimes difficult to do. But we've, we've tried to include um, Im images of, of the host rock, the different alteration, the different mineralisation styles, so, um, so they're sitting in there as well. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the geophysical data sets and the geochemical data sets are at, at the same scale over the same area, so you can um, put them all together. Um, and the stream sediment data. Now Mount Carbine, it's, in contrast, it's not, not so much a grison, it is a sheeted um, vein system. Um, we're doing some work up, up there at the moment in terms of, of ore sorting, and, and this picture was taken by uh, Nathan Fox, who's doing that work. So still, still a reasonably large resource up there. I think that's about 60 million tonnes, and um, I think it's about 0 0.2, 0 0.2, uh, 0.12 um, tungsten oxide uh, type of grades. So different deposit to, to uh, Wolfram Camp, but as we saw, it's, it's, a, it's a different, um, I guess, um, erosional level or different setting relative to the, to the granites. It's sitting out in the Hodgkinson uh, formation, which is the dark material between those, those quartz veins. So the mineralisation sits in those sheeted quartz veins as, as shelite. Uh, again, this is a quick snapshot from the, the 3D atlas. Um, it's it's um, basically uh, EQ resources were very generous and gave us their, their geological model and all their drill data and, uh, and whatnot. So I just thought I'd have a quick um, flick through. Th this is a essentially a, um, a quick an animation of the data that we put into um, geoscience analysts. So at, at the regional scale, the, the satellite imagery, the, um, the geology and the, the topography and then we'll put uh, in the, the geophysical data as well so that you can get a good, good feel for, for how that deposit relates to the, to the geophysics. So I think that's probably the, the regional magnetics and then the um, detailed ground mag over the data, over the deposit. And then you'll, you'll see the, um, the data from the deposit as well in there. So that's the, um, that's the pit shell. And, um, and you, you'll see uh, there's the underground workings and some of the... Um, Drilling as well that um, that EQ Resources and Crony Met um, generously supplied to us. So I, I think those arrows there are, are showing the uh, the orientation of the, the veins, or some some sort of structure of the veins. I think, and then and then the grade down those those drill holes as well. So we put all all, all the material that we could get together, and this this is probably the most populated out out of the eleven deposits in northeast Queensland, uh, and that's that's the. Uh, the, the shells of the, or, or the lenses, the, the vein, the sheeted vein uh, systems there. So all of this information we put together, it's sitting there on, on the, uh, the uh, web, on the GSQ uh, data portal, so if anybody wants to download that and, and have a good look, with the objective being that you, you, can, you, can, you can have a good look and see what these deposits uh, actually look like um, and have all of that data in one spot. The final tungsten deposit is, is the watershed uh, deposit. It was probably a sheeted vein system as well. Um, highly deformed though, as you'll see from, from this myelinitic texture here in, in picture D. Um, and, and again, the, the plans and, and the sections, this is from uh, Jaime's, Jaime's work, um, we've, we've included to try and give people a feel for what the deposit looks like. And of course, all the data gone into the uh, geoscience analyst uh, package. Um, so that's, that's just an overview again of those deposits that we put in there. We, we've looked at those, um, at those tungsten deposits up to the north, uh, Watershed, Mount Carbine and uh, Wolfram Camp here. The other things are uh, some alluvial tin deposits uh, out at um, Tate River and uh, Kangaroo Creek, I think it's called out there, as well as um, uh, Collingwood I think is an alluvial tin deposit as well, as well as down around uh, Herberton. Um, I haven't touched on what are probably the, the most interesting deposits out in this neck of the wood are the, the polymetallic uh, belgammon, which is, is essentially, um, oh well, it's a whole, whole, whole collection, um, you know, molly, um, tungsten, tin, as well as a, a some pretty reasonable uh, indium resource as well. And um, we're, we're doing a lot of, lot of work up, up around here in terms of um, critical metals, and I noticed there's a critical metal session on the, uh, on the agenda for tomorrow morning, I think, and uh, Helen Dejeling, who's the director of the GSQ, will be talking there about some of the programs that, that we're doing. And, and they range from um, prospectivity and targeting for critical metals to uh, extracting value from, from waste at some of these old deposits. Um, so, Delivery, the third point is, is how to get this thing. 
Um, it's, it's available online. You'll see the... Um, oh, sorry. Hit too many buttons. Um, it's, it's available online both at the GSQ data portal um, and there you will find the link uh, as well as at our SMI um, site. Um, if you enter, um, if you go into any, any search engine and, um, and, and search for North East Queensland Mineral Deposit and maybe um, Geological Survey of Queensland, you will come across those, um, those, those links there. So that's, that's the Geoscience Data Portal at GSQ. This is our um, SMI um, website and that's, that's the picture of the, of the page there that you will um, find with all the deposit mineral atlases on it. Um, the one other thing I might add is that um, I guess following feedback is that essentially, well, we've got this 3D, 3D um, GIS and all these data sets tied together. Um, it's, it's a real pain in the butt to be installing software like Geoscience Analyst or importing it all into your own software, etc. What can we do about that? So we're currently working on another project funded by GSQ that we call uh, Digital Earth. And it's essentially using a, an online platform um, run by a company called... Um, Euclidean, and they have some software called UD Stream, which essentially hosts all of the data on, on their um, Amazon servers, and it ports it straight to your, your web browser. And so the web browser is not doing the number crunching. It's like, like so many of these online cloud platforms these days. You're not actually doing any of the crunching or storing any of the data yourself. You're just getting the output. So we're, we're working on that Digital Earth program with the Geological Survey of Queensland um, to, to get a lot, a lot of the, the Queensland data, including all of this um, mineral deposit stuff in northeast Queensland and northwest Queensland together into the one platform so that you can then uh, access that through, through your web browser on, on any device, essentially. You don't need anything high-end, et cetera. Um, let me see. Okay, so that's, that's those addresses again, but as I said, you can find them in, the, um, in any uh, search engine uh, if, if you want to look. Um, okay, thanks very much. Thanks, Jeff.